So it turns out Ridge's combine did turn up yesterday and did try and tell me, but I didn't hear the phone. Uh, Reg rang me 10-15 minutes ago to say could I give him a lift up to um, the uh, New Holland dealers because I think his tractor with a brake issue has been sorted, repaired and he needs a lift up to go and get that so I'm going to go and fetch him sometime today uh, so you will get a chance to see the new combine freshly polished and in Reg's barn and maybe, maybe Another trip to TH White's on lockdown. Right, okay, so. Oh yeah, what am I doing now? I'm, I'm measuring stuff. So to the centre is 900, okay? 90 centimetres between that point and that point. So basically in the middle of these things. So if I go to the outside, we are looking at 97. And to the inside, we are going to 80.5. 80, 80. So, right. Okay. So I need to measure the loader up because I need to go to um, tailors or give tailors um, equipment a ring. Uh, they are a manufacturing fabrication company not far from us. In fact, they're quite close to, to the farm, just down the road. And they make loads and loads of agricultural implements. So basically, if you've got a Merlot and you want to attach somebody else's implements to it or whatever else, they, will, they make backing plates to convert one to another or adapter plates. They make all that sort of stuff. If you want a set of pallet forks for something, they'll make that. So um, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can um, maybe get a, uh, a look around their new workshops. Um, so they just had a new manufacturing uh, place put in. So maybe we'll go down and have a chat with young Mr. Taylor and they can tell us all about the stuff that they could supply you because they ship all over the world okay so it doesn't matter where you are you could be in south africa or australia if you want one of their implements they'll ship it to you so um yeah so you might be interested in that so a future video perhaps but yeah so today i just need to know if the attachments they have which they did tell me they didn't make these are cheap chinese things that they've got but they happen to have them in stock and they're cheap um, which is probably okay for me because you know how much loader work I do with this tractor. Very, very little. I don't need to spend loads of money. So, uh, and I'm trying my best not to spend loads of money. But, okay, anyway, so that's that. And then the distance between those two, we are looking at uh, 18 to centre, 16. 16 centimeters so all i need really is the distance between the um, headstock um, rams and the, the base the pivot to make sure that what they've got will fit what i have so a phone call in a minute or i'll go and look at the schematic plan he sent me and see if their measurements match up with mine 10 to 11 in the morning, Reg has called, I'm on my way over to pick him up, take him up to Knockdown to pick his tractor up. I've rung Knockdown and said, can I bring the camera in? They said, yeah, that's all right. And when you're here, if it's not raining, walk it in the field. There's something big, shiny and red out there I'd probably be interested in. So I forget to tell him it's not pitting down rain like it is now. Maybe we'll go and see what the big shiny red thing is they've got in the field. So, uh, but first, into Reg's, in the shed, and have a quick look at his combine.
definitely looking a bit shinier now. You breakaway cable. They even polished the toolbox. Now I'm assuming that that is the new trailer. You got some kit. Right, so the little John Deere side by side is not in there, so he's obviously off out and about somewhere. So if he's not in the office up here, I'll have to ring him and find him. Where is he hiding? Hello? Hello, Reg, where are you hiding? I'm down the bloody fields at the moment. How are you? Driving back up, mate. Just get me out there. Just going back up, all right? All right, see you in a minute. I'll, I'll be in the shed. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I know where he is. Down there. So I'll go back down there. In the dry. Ah, there he is. Right, I spotted him. He's way down over there. So, he won't be back for 10 minutes. I can hear Mr. Cornock hard at it over there. I'd go and call in for him and say hello, but Reg will be here in a minute. So you got away with it this time, Rich. Oh, is that a little skid steer? Yeah. Was that a used one, is it? Yeah, no, it's well, huge by us. I have them than about upgrading my skids here. I haven't got a windscreen in mine. A bit longer than mine. Well, if ever you want to drop it off and let me have a play with it. See what we can do. Would you be able to tow that? That'd be too heavy to go on a trailer, wouldn't it? Uh, I don't know what you would weigh. I can, I can tow mine. Can you? Yeah. I'll have a look into it. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that'd be much more than two and a half ton, would he? No, he probably would go on a little bit later. Huh. Yeah. Right, one of these is Reg's then, is it? Or is that over there? Raining. Yeah. Don't like it. Just put a coat on. Yeah. You pull it up the side for him? Yeah, might as well. I'm parked up there, so. Yeah. I'll let you take it. Yeah. Very clean in here. Is it? Yeah. Andy's been in there with the, you know, dust pad and brush perhaps. Fancy demo in a T7 225 New Holland. Hey, okay. better give Marley a call. the springs now and you've got air shot uh, on, the, on, the, on the cab. Mm. You get seasick in there. It's nice. Is it's it? Nice. Bloody lovely. 
It's not too bad, though. No, it's not too bad. He's going to say that because he wants a sour one. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's a lot nicer on the vibrations of it and things like that. It just takes the edge off the, the pot holes, that sort of thing. Keeps your bum more comfy, Reg. There's a lot to be said for having a comfy bum. Yeah. Worth a lot of money now. Yeah. A lot of money. That doesn't look massive, does it, for a... No, so it's still a short wheelbase. It looks quite big because it's on the big wheel. Yeah. That's it good. Well, it's a good all-round size track. Yeah. Not that wet. Yeah. How long have you been out here? Yeah. It's only been here for three weeks. You <laughs> <laughs> go to sleep under there. That wants some horses to run that too, wouldn't it? Huh? That want all those horses to run that, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, they take some more. Yeah. And Reg. Yeah. Reg put that on his T6, didn't you, Reg? Oh, you got a T6 anymore, have you? Yeah. No, I got rid of the bloody thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right, take that home right. and... Don't crack yeah. it. <laughs> you didn't crash it, you have to buy another one. Yeah, and you would Right, only a short visit. Everybody's busy, everybody's got places to be, but I did say to Marley, do you know what? I wouldn't mind having a look at that little skid steer. So, um, so maybe that will come and pay us a visit soon. Just, we'll compare that to the Mustang. So, uh, that one is all on hand controls. So it'd be probably left hand to drive it and right hand to operate the bucket and boom. But that's okay, I've actually driven one of those before so I'll soon, soon suss that out. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll just have a little comparison between a 18 year old machine and a new one. Oh, lovely weather. Right, well, Reg has gone down the lane, so we'll go back Bay Road. Oh, the big red thing up at lockdown that was in the field. Uh, when I got there, it wasn't in the field. It was in the workshop. And I would have filmed it in the workshop, but there was something else going on in the workshop which prevented me from getting the camera out. They didn't want me to video it, so which was kind of fair enough. But let's just say it was... If you could imagine Reg's T8 half-track, a red version of that, but with wheels on every corner instead of a half-track. That's what it was. It was one of those. Welcome back, folks. It's still Friday. It's half past six in the evening. And I've come to a client of ours to look at a tree that's collapsed across the road. Hmm. Oh dear, didn't do the maple a lot of good either. Oh, that looks pretty dodgy. Hmm, that does look. Excuse me, I'm chewing a sweet. Yeah. I don't think our cherry picker's quite big enough for that. Hmm. There isn't that much space in here either, is there? Hmm. Okay. 
So, the stem that's left is split up right through the middle and is riddled with white rot and you can see where all the uh, beetle grubs have been up through it. Uh, so can't put a climber up there. Uh, this wind is due to keep, keep with us for, I think it's today and tomorrow, so we're not going to be doing anything today or tomorrow, I don't think, because even with a cherry picker, it's just a bit too risky. So my job now is to go home and see if I can find, I think we want some like a 25 meter cherry picker to get it there. And then we can whittle that down a bit. It wouldn't actually take very long. Probably once we've got set up, we have that down in a couple of hours. But um, yeah, it's just too risky to put a man up there. So we won't. 